All right, everyone, welcome back. We said we wouldn't be too long before getting into the game. And of course, you can see the action is live on your screens. Map number one, it is Nuke. It's LDLC is map pick. And well, to us, Alternate are going to need to show up here because they have a couple of difficult first two maps coming their way. Lambert, absolutely perfect on holding the flank there. Crystal and Panics, well, they panic as they don't check the corner. And as the B-bomb site defense is suddenly overrun as well. That's something we're going to have to note on. It does look like we're, la uh, we're lacking Stefan right now for Alternate. Yeah, which is, is not going to be too good of a time. Yeah, having to play with a stand-in in the form of Process isn't going to be ideal. And LDLC, well, they've made it the ideal pistol round from their perspective. Absolutely bombed it down into that B-bomb site. The flank was well held off by Lambert. And this one is done before it even really starts. Crimbo and Skrunk, in all honesty, should be looking Ooh. to save. The defuse kit will go down. Crimbo at least has some armor that he could potentially look to hold on to. Playing a fairly aggressive hold in towards Secret on a slight off angle. Kios looking to clear his way up and oh, this timing. Oh, that is awful. Crimbo looking the wrong way at the worst possible moment. And LDLC, they make it a flawless pistol around a flying start on Nuke. Yeah, damn, that was crisp. Worked out perfectly. They ran straight over towards Ramp. It immediately pulls the uh, the players who were on A to, to try and get that flank going on because there was so many damn steps. But no, Lambert chilling in the corner. They also even find the Ramp entry. And as you said, the, the pistol round was basically over there before it begun. A bit of a rough start for alternate. They will come through with a force by though. And well, look at this. Deagles, 157, a scout though, importantly, alongside those. Y you can get a good combo with, with the Deagle and the Scout. Tag up with the Scout, you can finish with the Deagle a lot easier, do it the opposite way, and the Scout basically becomes an op then. So it, it is something that LDLC need to be cautious of, but you can see even then they've gone heavily towards those rifles. A few Galils even to ensure that they have the basic nades to, to clear corners, to flash those players off at angles, and, uh, well, to get the smokes down if they need them, and even then, really taking their time right now, being pretty cautious about things. It's an interesting call. Normally, it's more frequently the CT sides that you'll see going for those heavy rifle-based buys because that T-side force really is lethal. You end up with a couple of Galils and three pistols. It can do some serious damage. Whereas, as much as, yes, the scout can tag up and the Deagles can start to bag players, a rifle's not really going to help you with that too much. An SMG jumping around a corner, making life awkward for those Deagles can do a lot of work. So a big call to invest this heavily this early on. And with 50 seconds left on the clock, no map control taken at all for LDLC. They really don't know what to expect here. All four players, they're waiting for the lobby crunch. They're waiting for uh, for alternate attacks to pull the trigger and start to push in. But with 30 seconds left, second batch of smokes come out and the pressure is really going to start to flip over towards LDLC here. Crimbo looking to get aggressive, lines it up. Nice one D gone to Sixer. And that pressure just keeps on mounting. 25 seconds as the trigger is finally pulled on this execute. Nades go into A. Kios does well and opens things up with a double. They needed that. Crystal only able to find one on the tray, but he's keeping his team in with a shout here. As Process has dropped onto the bomb site as well, looking to catch his man off guard. It's going to be close. He's managed to find one again, but the tray just a split second too soon. Oh, smoked out of heaven. No, no time. time. No time. Oh, oh no. My goodness. I didn't even notice it. I didn't even see that they didn't have enough oh. time left on that clock. And that's the problem with running it down so low. You could see the player on the bomb site as well trying to grab it. He, he had to continue looking up towards heaven because, well, it, it was dangerous at that point. But he was unable to find it using the radar. So it took that extra second or so. And yeah, just no time, unfortunately. Well, that's an interesting way for Alternate to come out on top of the force by the great entries from Kios. It looked like LDLC were going to have a pretty easy time getting in towards that bomb site, but no process delaying with just the one kill basically wins them it all. And yeah, now Alternate, they're in a fantastic position. This gives them the chance to really get going in the early stages here in Nuke. As you mentioned, LDLC, they are a pretty fantastic team here on Nuke and just Maka in general throughout his career whenever I've seen him on this map he's been incredible so I think once he gets the op going especially that's something alternate are going to need to fear a little bit uh, unless panics can step up and match him but for now obviously it is the force buy in return from LDLC a couple of rifles a Mac 10 and the two deagles obviously the rifles were carried over so that's the only reason they could even have that much one silver lining, if you want to look at it for LDLC, is no rifles saved across by the CT side either. If they'd kept a couple of players alive there, there was AKs all over the floor to, for them to be picking up instead. Crimbo will be the sole upgrade. Three MP9s, and of course, Panic sticking around on that scout, winning by virtue of the clock in the previous. LDLC, again, just waiting out this early engagement. They've managed to get Kios at least down into secret on this occasion, so they've got a little bit of map control to work with, some slight information. 
but it's going to take one hell of a hit to make it work because again there's such a heavy stack those mp9s of crystal and skrunk playing the aggressive angles up close and personal and as haji starts to sneak his way out the early tag of the scout through the wall at least for sixer but here go the mp9s they're trying to dive down these vents and crimbo's got it on lock should be easy and the double does come in that's bombed down and as much as they're finding kills on the upper bomb site it's not going to matter mopped up nice and cleanly alternate attacks building themselves a great little platform early on yeah fantastic round right there only uh i think what they did lose even was the smg so with, with that they can come straight back in even with another smg build up some money here against what should be mostly glocks i'm seeing one p250 upgraded but that is going to be it that's the extent of the buy right now for ldlc they want to make sure they have a strong investment in this next round they don't want to let alternate get off to a, well, a fantastic start. And yeah, I'm excited to see what this team can do because when I did get to watch them play, I was going to say they had only had the lineup for like a week. So I, I didn't really get a feel for what they were going to be able to deliver with this five man. But well, so far it's looking pretty decent in the early stages of this game. It is getting slightly dangerous after losing that initial player and panic's getting dinked down. But I was going to say there shouldn't be any more issue with only Haji left alive, but he's gone ahead and dinked up another player. If he can finish off even one of these, then this is a fantastic round, considering they only put $300 into it. But no, jump at MP9s, why not? <laughs> just needed one teammate alive there, didn't he? He just needed somebody else on the server. Yeah. Otherwise, alternate attacks, they just queued up. All four players, a couple of players diving, ducking, making sure they're not visible. The other two have got health. They'll take on a Glock fight any day of the week. But as you said... LDLC, they were saving up for this, and it's going to be the full AK buy. A little slim on the utility in places. We'll have to be very careful about how they look to utilize it. Alternate attacks, interestingly enough, going for a little bit of a bonus onto the uh, ringer for this game. Process will pick himself up that MP9, despite having enough money to upgrade onto one of the more fully-fledged rifles. Does mean Panix has his hands on that AWP in process, playing close behind the smoke. Might actually be able to get ahead of the flash as well as they start to come through. He gets one, and the second should not be getting this much. A third on the USPS before Maka can trade him through. And that's the problem with going through these smokes. You're going to get punished. Maka does fantastically well to at least get a second and make this somewhat viable. But with his teammate isolated and now taken down, it's going to take a miracle blow. Sorry, was just fixing up some audio issues. Hopefully all is good now. Just had to get the in-game audio hired a little bit. But yeah, Maka left alone. Not going to lie, did miss a little bit of what was going on, Wolfie. <laughs> on the production at the same time. Trying to trying to make sure everything's smooth while we're still in the early stages of the game. And uh, yeah, I think we should be all good now. What can be done is the question. Where is he even chilling now? He's actually creeped his way down on towards B. But there is already a player up close in the double doors. So... Trying to actually get that bomb planted without a smoke, it's going to be tough. He could, in theory, put the molly down towards the doors, but I don't know if that's something he's going to go for. And obviously, there is the uh, a couple other positions that he also has to worry about. Now he's being heard anyway, so they have confirmed his position. He may actually just about get it down. No, wants to see if he can take the fight, I believe. Makes sense, wanted to drop it into a more winnable two-on-one before he actually gets that bomb placed down. But now it just means by the time he does get it in position, he's going to be rushed down. And while well, everyone was ready, he also had the rotation already in from ramp there. So yeah, good good retake anyway from alternate. They do end up conceding the bomb plant, obviously, but it's not a big deal. They take a clean gun round with three players still standing. They head up four to one. And well, this is a fantastic start on their opponent's map choice. We, we kind of... We, we didn't know exactly what to expect here on Nuke. We also don't know what to expect on Vertigo, but if they keep on playing like this, then I, I think we've got an interest in best of three coming our way for sure. Absolutely. And to be fair, almost having that substitute player in makes things a little more awkward for LDLC, right? Process, yeah. if they've done prep, if they've worked out where Stefan plays, he can be a little more dynamic. He can start to pick up some spots that perhaps he plays and Stefan doesn't. Just rotate these plays up, make it more difficult for LDLC to get a read on the situation. And... Well, it worked out beautifully in that round, right? Playing on the wrong side of a smoke. MP9 gets him two. He catches six with a USP as he's trying to jump through, you know. Does fantastic work, and he's put LDLC back down onto these pistols. Three digs, a couple of Tech 9s. The early smokes have gone out. They've still got one in the pocket of Maka. But it looks like they're just going to try and sneak four players down into secret, and I don't mind this at all. Just try and overwhelm up close and personal in towards those holes see if you can maybe just get a frag a bomb plant the extra 800 dollars would be absolutely fantastic but it's going to be crystal on this headshot angle initially to take the fight lambert 
looking for the boost, looking to make life as difficult as possible. He's going to boost him round the corner. Doesn't quite spot the man, and it's going to be Crystal repositioning. They're going to boost around the next corner as well. They are determined to make this work, and they do spot him, but he falls off his shoulders at the worst possible moment. Nade does good work, and it's onto Crystal with the spray down. Only the one, and potentially half a chance for a bomb plant here. Yeah, he did do a lot of damage, though, on top of that as well, with both Maka and Kyo's being taken down fairly low. I'd actually like to see that rifle in the hands of one of the healthier players, but at the moment, they've just slowed things down. They know there was plenty of warning for alternate to get another player into position, and, well, that's what we're seeing. We have Process as well as someone back on ramp, but hang on, Panix has been flanked out. Suddenly, Maka pops out, takes the head off of Process, and, yeah, that bomb plant is going to come in in a very winnable position that seems to be just getting better and better, Wolfie. Skrunk gets dinked up, and uh, maybe even at this point, even though they have money, they could be considering that save. Are they aware of how low Maka is, is the question, because I think that was done initially when uh, I think Crystal is aware that he was able to get that dink. So yeah, it looks like they do want to move in, but very quickly being de uh, denied. Maka gets the finish on Skrunk, and yeah, Crimbo surely just to back away. There's no way he gets away with the one on three, oh. and well, he's not even going to be allowed to escape. A little bit of a hole in the door gives Vision the sixer. A second round for LDLC. Uh, one that they had no right pretty much actually getting anything done in. It didn't start off too well for them, but yeah, very well played with that flank coming around on Panics. I didn't even uh, I didn't even notice that that was going on. Neither did alternate attacks. He just slow walked his way through Trophy, in through the ramp, gets a freebie onto the AWPA, and that was really the crutch of the entire hole for alternate attacks, right? He was covering the majority of the angles. He had a teammate to try and prey on any aggressing T-sided players, which is what you can expect when they're on these lesser pistols, and as a result, the whole round fell apart. It's going to be a fast play initially over Mini, but Skrunk is well prepared for it. LDLC have got some good damage out. Crimbo's gone down to 23 HP, trying to fight the squeaky door initially. And again, actually a little bit silently this time, LDLC have managed to get their man down the vents. The three remaining players have made their way in towards Secret. And it definitely looks like the B bomb site is the order of service at the minute. Haji should get a freebie here. Skrunk peeks right into the crosshair and he opens things up, levels it out at four on four. And the CTs, they've got to commit to a very long rotation if they want to get back down to this B bomb site. And it looks like they do. Yeah, well, they already have um, a few players in position here to defend. Though Alton actually have three players down on B. That means, obviously, if LDLC move back and decide to take this towards the upper bomb site, then th there is going to be a lot of trouble. And I was about to say it looks like they could be considering it, but I think they're actually just moving back around towards double in the window. Which would make sense. Panics at the moment up in the window room. He is going to need a bit of assistance from his teammates, which isn't quite available, but he's got the molly and he's pulled them forward. A second shot from Panics is fantastic as Lambert falls and, well, as process is unexpected, tucked in up close. He has a free drop towards Haji. It is all onto Maka once again. We've seen him in this position a couple of times and, well, right now he's just trying to escape to see if that op can be salvaged, but it won't be allowed. Crystal was nearby. Did they want the secondary up? No, they decide against that. I thought maybe Crystal would have taken it. It's nuke. It's a map where you can make it work. But, I mean, at the moment, it's going pretty well with the current setup. So, I guess don't uh, you, you don't get to fix it, fix it if it ain't broken. Words, why are they so difficult, Wolfie? <laughs> it's when you're being paid to say words. They just get infinitely <laughs> more complicated and you can't quite land them, can you? But I think LDLC, guilty of... Perhaps not exploring all their options there. They thought the B-bomb site would be as easy as last time. It definitely wasn't. Alternate attacks willing to commit heavily on that rotation. And with nobody lurking, traditionally for a T-side, as an aside here while we're in this pause, uh, you'll have one player somewhere in lobby. Maybe peeking hut occasionally, maybe peeking squeaky occasionally. Just to keep those rotations as honest as possible. Keep those players isolated on that A-bomb site, give your teammates time to hit into B. LDLC didn't commit to that, potentially because they lost the man early. And from there, it was a fast rotation down alternate attacks, a little bit of a gamble, three players over on that B-bomb site, and of course, a little bit of magic from Panics on the AWP to make it work. LDLC do get a decent enough buyout regardless. Just Lambert having to drop down onto the Tech-9, a sacrifice of utility across the board. And again, they're looking to pile this pressure onto Mini. Skrunk is good for it, though. Initial frag comes through onto Haji. Does get traded out, and now they're trying to go quickly into this A-bomb site. The trade's coming through in a flurry, and it is LDLC again with that man advantage. Krimbo only trading one for one, and through the molly. Process can't quite get it done. Kios will take him down, and it is complete chaos on that A bomb site, but it goes the way of LDLC. Uh, that's unfortunate. If he had have made it past that last little ticket of Molly, then yeah, he, he would have actually had a good position to keep that player trapped in behind the silo. 
But uh, no, not able to make it work. It's LDLC who fire right back, as you said. And it does seem like these quicker players are what are really working out for them. Think back to round two, even when they tried to slow things down after the pistol. Obviously, they ended up uh, kind of losing on the clock, but they did end up running into a little bit of a stack as well because of just playing so slow and being a little bit more predictable. But yeah, whenever they take this pace up, they have incredible success. We've seen it on, well, a slightly weaker buy in that round, but obviously the pistols in the round before, uh, in the um, two rounds before, rather because it's been a little bit back and forth now. But yeah, alternate, their money's finally being uh, ground down into a position where they can barely even afford an op. They get the glass cannon up on panics. Other than that, though, a few pistols and MP9 nades are okay, but they also don't have a kit. And so far, we've been seeing LDLC have a decent amount of success at actually getting towards those bomb sites. So it's certainly something to worry about at this point. We'll see, though. Panics needs to try and find them something early to work with to alleviate some of that pressure. Yeah, stringing few rounds together alternate attacks but that back and forth at the moment is just so lethal for a ct side it just makes life yeah pretty much untenable it's impossible to really build yourselves up an opportunity and on a map like nuke you Ooh. need to have your rifles you need your utility available as again ldlc not going too quickly into this looking to bleed out the utility that alternate attacks do have and they've done a good job a couple of smokes being dropped some flashes thrown to try and stall the rush that never came it has been at some significant cost, though. Process again on this tight angle is going to be gifted a freebie. Maka with a Molotov in his hands, and he's able to escape as well. Doing a fantastic job of locking out that trophy room. And now LDLC, it is every time they slow it down, it just seems to be falling apart ever so slightly. They've got to walk right into it, and Panix is going to get a second pick. Haji going down over towards Squeaky. He can even re-aggress on this if he wants to. Already two players down. LDLC again in need of a little bit of a Miracle Sixer. Does well for one and the spray down. The transfer from Lambert will come through. They've rescued this one LDLC and it's just Skrunk on this bomb site to try and do everything he can. Oh, and he's gotten one. Unfortunately, his teammate gets taken down in the background, so he is all alone, but now he's aware where the final player is. Low health as well on Lambert. One bullet needed, and there it is! A ridiculous play from Skrunken behind the bomb site. I fully dedicated the view to him because I thought that Deagle was going to be dangerous, and well, yeah, it was. Skrunk comes up huge. Uh, and this is a man that was, uh, I said you kind of, you know what you're going to get from him. He was always a very solid player. He always delivered the kills when needed and such. But now that they have Crystal in here leading, I believe, that frees him up a bit more. So, yeah, maybe this is what we're going to be getting from him. That is absolutely gigantic. As you said, the back and forth affair was really starting to put the toll on alternate attacks. Now they get themselves a fantastic lifeline to very likely go up 7-3 to three unless they somehow lose it out again to Pistols, which I really hope isn't going to happen, Wolfie. For the map pick of LDLC, they do not seem to know how to play a slow round at the minute, do they? Every time they've slowed it down, every time they've taken the pace off it, it's just fallen apart at the seams, whether it's a full buy or an eco and crystal. Again, going to start thinning the numbers early. It's an awkward spray from Skrunk. Clearly not too used to the org yet, but still manages to connect onto one. And the pistol's already down to three. You really need numbers when you're on these sort of buys to be able to overwhelm your opposition. Still, of course, a chance for some of these one digs to come in. Panic's missing the initial shot, but he's good for the refrag, and he's good for the flick onto Sixer as well. This is so much more like it from the German side. Process will clean things up. It's a flawless round on the board, and a seventh CT round as well. LDLC, they've squandered a couple of chances to make something of this T-half, and they're running out of opportunities now. It is getting a bit rough, yeah. Uh, ooh, half by her, not able to get the full investment. I mean, considering, again, how the fast rounds have been working for them, I'm actually fine with this. Uh, I do think they'll probably find some openings here, but still, uh, on paper, this should be alternate attacks this round. We should have an 8-3 to three lead, and, well, a pretty fantastic position, considering how things looked like they were going to be going. Process, yeah, rough spot to only have the MP9 there. Multiple MAC-10s coming in his direction, and, well, the same to be said for panics, but he does not panic. He composes himself and, well, holds the line at least towards hell. You will see Haji and Kios slip in towards B, but what can they really do with it? You've already got Skrunk down as well. He catches one at least before being dropped, and, well, now a one-on-three for Kios. He needs to come up huge. We've seen a clutch just a couple of rounds ago, obviously, for alternate out of Skrunk. I, I think it's time that LDLC need one of these to try and start getting themselves back into it now. Manages to pick himself up the rifle. Limited information on where the CT side are, and... Crimbo playing this one pretty much to perfection, just tucking himself into the corner. He'll play the audio cues. If that bomb goes down, he'll hear it ticking through. Panics there to back him up, holding secret. Orp have been having a blinding game so far. 
not the best on the scoreboard. Does have the most frags in the server, at least for now, but he's just been consistent with it. And Kios, he's struggling here. He's trying to pick off any of these fights, toying around in the vent, now starting to rotate through to control, but the CT side are giving him absolutely nothing. He'll start to clear his way through, surely to take the fight any second now. Crimbo in towards the dark corner. Very difficult. Awkward to clear, and he'll be cleaned up as well. Might even be able to grab the org if the movement's good enough, and he will just nab that rifle at the death. So a guaranteed lead at the half. Alternate attacks looking pretty damn solid against everything LDLC have been able to throw at them. Of course, the rifle bike does come through, but with only three more rounds left in this one to really start building things up. You've got to be successful now, right? You've got to start taking that orb away from panics. You've got to start putting the pressure back onto alternate attacks. And well, Crystal, potentially giving them a little bit of an in. Again, has the money to invest, but opts instead for the MP9. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting one. I guess the position he's playing around that A-bomb site can be pretty useful. Still up close on Hut, especially, but... Yeah, we'll see how it works for him. He actually heard the smoke connecting there on towards Haji in, in the hut, but unfortunately that left them open the main, and they just had no one watching it. There is a trade from Skrunk but before he goes down, rather, and then Panic's showing up with one, but he's in a lot of trouble with low health on the bomb site. And yeah, they've lost A now. Fortunately, the bomb was actually dropped by that ramp aggression that had come in, and, well, Crimbo just sprints up through Secret and catches Sixer. So it looks like, again, the, uh, the round kind of starts to fall apart, uh, apart in the later moments for LDLC. Once things slow down a small bit, he will get the bomb back, I believe. So that shouldn't be an issue. But you can see already Process has rotated back around, so he's in heaven now to watch that A-bomb site. And, well, Crimbo actually on outside at the moment. So in theory, you could see Lambert creep down ramp, but he's not going to be heading in that direction. Instead, up towards the A-bomb site, where he could potentially at least find the bomb plant here. If he goes to put it down for heaven, then unfortunately, I think Process should have the kill on him as soon as he, uh, I was going to say, even comes up from the bomb plant. But no, it could have been the fake, so he decides to just let it happen. Makes sense. Play to one on two. He is already low health himself. Doesn't want to leave Crimbo alone. But now Lambert, he has the opportunity to get into a position for that after plant. And, well, let's see. I don't think he spotted the player in heaven. There's actually a small gap in the smoke there as well that did give him away. And it didn't really matter because Process had the backstab from heaven. There we go. Nine to three alternate. Pulling it back once again, there was some decent entries there initially from LDLC. It's just losing that bomb, leaving the bomb on the back player who had been throwing the nades over on the roof, I believe. And then he got caught, got caught move, uh, moving back down the ladder. And things just kind of spiraled out from there. You're tempted to say it's unfortunate, but alternate attacks, they've had so much success into that trophy room. It does make sense that at some point they're going to re-aggress and keep pushing through, right? They've consistently found frags there. The trades haven't really been coming through, so potentially they're looking at it and going, okay, we can keep pushing this. We can go a little bit further. You know, if there's no presence there, why not have a peek into the lobby? And as you said, with Bomb down in that situation, it's so difficult for Lambert to get anything done. It was really well played again by alternate attacks not committing to an early 1v1, not giving him a chance to drag things down, just staying together, grouping up, not even afraid to give the bomb plant away at this point to LDLC because they're pretty happy with how everything's been going. In all honesty, they've looked consistent alternate attacks across the board and just been denying LDLC the opportunity to do anything besides the occasional rush right into the crosshairs, right? That's the only time they found success is when they've been able to catch alternate attacks, perhaps just setting a little bit slow to their initial positions. And you're only going to get so many of those per a half. So definitely feels like alternate attacks in control of this situation for now. Of course, Nuke can be fairly CT-sided, but the oh, damn. Dive. oh, the punishment from Skrunk. Three through the vent. LDLC looking to up the pace down towards that B-bomb site yet again. And Skrunk, well, that is the perfect denial. He will be traded through, but it's left Macker again in the 1v3. It's not going to happen. It's all too easy for Skrunk to lock it out and his double digits for alternate attacks. Yeah, as I said, I'm loving what we're seeing from Skrunk so far in this game. That that massive 3k that clutched him out the round earlier on. And well, right there, you, I guess there's nothing really too skill-wise to look at. But it was just a nice little play to see three of them spray it down through the vent. That's, that, that's a good way to vent your anger, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to let you off that one. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. It, it wasn't great, but I had to do it. Haji. Oh, okay. Nice open. And I thought he was going to be in trouble as the smoke bloomed, but he even takes a second. Did spot the head in, uh, up in heaven, rather, but wasn't aware that Crystal was also towards this A-bomb site. But it doesn't seem to matter. Even with four players pretty much ready for the defense, they have been picked apart. And again, it is the high-paced uh, high players from LDLC that Alternate cannot handle. 
whenever we see them slow it down, they just don't find success. I, I don't know. I feel like they could have probably had a bit more from this half, but getting that round there now, it, it set them up okay to potentially get this fifth one. Not for free by any means, because there is still decent money for alternate, but you can see they're having to drop things around. I don't think they'll really be lacking in weapons. Maybe the nades could be slightly better, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's the case for Prosis, but other than that, they have pretty much everything. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? I think pretty much all four of the rounds that LDLC have had, including the pistol, have just been rushing into somebody's face and getting aggressive, being proactive and relying on your individual skill. But once again, they're going to roll it back into the slow round initially. Hasn't been successful for them previously. Let's see if they can get a fifth off the back of it. The early nades will come in towards this A-bomb site. The Molotovs will fling over the top. Just starting to clear the early angles. But again, alternate attacks not giving them anything. Not flooding anywhere. Not getting aggressive just yet. Happy to sit back and hold the angles. Still plenty of util available for LDLC as they do start to plan out this execute. The smokes will head towards outside, trying to cover the cross in towards secret. They have favoured the B-bomb site pretty consistently in this first half. And it looks like that will be the case, at least for now, as Kios starts to sneak his way down into secret. Early aggression from Haji really starting to switch on now as he finds the opener. And they're going to reroute off the back of it straight into this A-bomb site. Haji lurking in the hut, buying more time as Panics actually opts to drop, and Haji's got his number. Again, a huge a double opener for him before he's traded out by Skrunk, and he's bought his team the opportunity. It's just a question of these timings. Krimbo's backstab's good. Brings it level at three on three, and Process catches the flank into heaven. And LDLC, once again, being undone by their own timings. 15 seconds left. They've got to go. They've got to commit to this B-bomb site. And already the CT side are making these aggressive rotations. Skrunk's got the AWP in towards Decon. Krimbo is locked on these double doors. There won't be a plant. Six against one frag, but the plant denial comes in. And that's the round. It's going to be 11 at the half for alternate attacks. Again, time just the worst enemy of LDLC. And honestly, for LDLC's map pick, I'm a little bit disappointed. Oh yeah, no, I was expecting a lot more. Uh, I don't think we got to see the likes of Maka getting going. Haji only really woke up in those final few rounds as well, so I'm still hopeful that we can see more from them here on the CT side. But yeah, Alternate are looking fantastic. They have a chance right now to steal Nuke away from LDLC and to put themselves in an amazing position. Again, we don't know exactly what to expect of their Vertigo, but the last time they played it, they did have a pretty good win over Sangal, and Sangal has some pretty noteworthy players. I mean... They've been solid individually. Like when I when I think of Vertigo, I just immediately go to individual players, right? And looking at the stats for people who've been popping off, Crystal's been having a pretty good game. Obviously, Process as the stand-in's been pretty solid across the board and panics. He hasn't been asked too much on the AWP, but when he's been put in those slightly awkward positions for a younger player, he's been playing them really intelligently. You know, we saw early on in towards uh, control room, wasn't it? He gets the initial pick. There's two more players there ready to hunt him down. He drops the Molotov. There's a little bit of indecision. One player commits from LDLC. The other says he'll wait behind the flames. And he gets that second pick, stays alive, buys himself time. It really does feel like he's just playing a high percentage game of CS, right? He's giving himself the best possible opportunity to get as many frags as possible. And as much as Vertigo isn't really an AWP's paradise, if he continues that consistency... It's going to take somebody on LDLC to step up and really try and do some damage. Otherwise, this could be another pretty catastrophic 2-0. But we're not there yet. 11-4 to at the half. Nuke, certainly one of the more CT-sided maps in the pool. Although the, the recent meta argues slightly differently. And here we go. LDLC, I think pistol round, pretty much essential, don't you think, Ding? Oh yeah, I mean, anytime you're at even a 10-5 scoreline, I think the pistol round becomes damn near essential, because if you lose it and don't manage to win out a force fight and you just go down way too much at 11-4, to yeah, certainly on the CT side, you need to be winning out that pistol, otherwise you're down potentially 14-4 to before you even see a gun round, and you just can't let that happen, you have no room then for any sort of mistakes, so yeah, this is of course crucial, we need to see LDLC coming out hot on the second half, and well, it's going to be a quick rush on towards A from alternate, and with a few players set up for LDLC, they've certainly got the 
the positioning. And while they've got the start again with Haji being the one who actually does contribute for LDLC, Mac is still on top of the hut as well, kind of just keeping them busy as Haji does all of the fragging. He cannot <laughs> be stopped right now. Four to his name and here comes Krimbo. He's just going to slice through him. That is all five. A fantastic ace for Haji. And you said they need someone to wake up and, and kind of match what we're getting at the moment from the three players who are, who are fragging over an alternate. And well, yeah, good signs from Haji. I mean, you couldn't ask any more, could you? Eight frags in the first half. He's gone straight up to 13 with a huge ace just simply hitting his shots, right? They, I mean, alternate attacks, crisp, it yeah. felt a little bit blunt. There was one flash over the top. It didn't really blind too many players and clearly just hoping that the first half would continue and they just keep hitting their shots and punishing. Didn't quite land that way. And interestingly enough, even without that bomb plant, alternate attacks wanting to force into this one. Four deagles. Panix drops down onto the scout. Did have money for the armor behind it, but has opted not to, potentially to pull out that AWP a little bit earlier. CT side. A slightly more passive buy than what we saw in the first half from LDLC. Not going for the full rifles. Instead, a couple of SMGs come out, a UMP onto Lambert to pick up a HE and a flashbang behind it. And for now, at least, alternate attacks, happy to play it slow. That lurking outside control starting to come through and panics. Got to imagine we'll take this early contact here. Finds a little bit of damage, but not enough at all. Haji looking like he's on an absolute tear at this point. It's a second for Macker. It's an awkward spray, but Skrunk at least trades for one. But with Haji posted up in heaven, it really does feel like he can do no wrong at this point. Pushing aggressively now in towards Mini as Krimbo tries to sneak on out. It's not working out at all. And Kios will just mop up the remaining frags. It's a sixth round on the board for LDLC. It's pretty much a guaranteed full eco from alternate attacks and an opportunity for that French roster to start building into the second half. Oh, we've got a, the P90, though. I love P90s. I don't. Oh, that, that's no. a joke. I, it's just, it's questionable in the in the sense that you're not going to get the extra money for it and it costs quite a bit more than the other SMGs, but I, I guess it's also more useful then, on, especially on a map like Nuke, once you do go up against the rifles. If you're going to use it around A, kind of like how Crystal was using his MP9, for example, you can also just charge through the door like an absolute madman. That seems to work pretty well. Yeah, nice little flick over to take out Crystal and... Well, it's actually Sixer who comes in and nicks the last kill, so it's only going to be two for the P90. That's what you want, though. Again, it doesn't have the boosted loss bonus. Sixer only had a FAMAS <laughs> as well, but, like, I mean, you may as well give him $300. It's not like you're getting 600 per frag. It is obviously Maka. That's what makes it more questionable. He's the opera as well. Mm. <laughs> you want you want him to be the one who's specifically building up the bank. He's going to stick onto the P90. Again, I'm good with this. I think it's pretty useful right now. They've got pretty much a full bonus buy here with loads left in the bank. But it's it's still a position where it's 11-7. You don't want to be losing this first gun round just for the sake of actually getting the momentum going. Full buy up for alternate attacks as well. Emptying the bank to get panics onto that AWP. So... A definite firepower advantage for the T side. Interesting to see how they look to unbox this one. Going initially towards the outside control. The wall of smokes will come through over the top. In an area they've pretty consistently targeted. Besides the pistol rushes into the hut. Both times they've had a decent amount of firepower. It has been this early outside control. But down in secret it's Maka P90. Oh, There's Lord. a slight gap in that smoke. Two Three big bombs. frags. And he's looking for the range third. Can't quite connect, but it's a lot of damage done. And it's alternate attacks in an awful position it's once again, spread across outside and really nothing they can do at this point, except hope that somebody on LDLC makes a mistake. Who else is it that's down here? Yeah, it's Lambert. He has full control of the bomb. That's why he's sticking around. And well, we're Haji nearby as well. He takes the initial contact. Haji swings out and they just clean up the scraps on outside. That was absolutely insane. The range he tried to take on that third fight as well against the player that was all the way back on outside. It's not really what you're looking for normally with a P90, but he's still done fantastic damage. Absolutely great work from Maka and LDLC. Yeah, they are coming alive right now on the CT side. This is what we needed from them. I'm not expecting really anything to be done from Krimbo in this one-on-four, unfortunately. If he could get a couple of kills, at least make it a, a more costly round, I guess that would help a bit. But even then, there is money for LDLC, so it's not going to do immediate damage. And yeah, with 10 seconds left, he is just looking to try and save this AK over. It'll be the only rifle they have to work with. Everyone else probably just going to go ahead and take the Eco since they do have the full loss bonus. You can get some pistols, maybe some Kevlar around it. And, well, preferably, Krimbo is going to need a couple of kills or a bomb plant, of course, so that he can ensure with his uh, with his rifle in the next round, he'll also be able to get nades. I mean, they have just postal delivered 
a four-man upgrade to LDLC, right? They've given them three AKs. They've given them an AWP onto Maka. That P90 is looking prophetic at this point. He has just played it to perfection, grabs himself an AWP into this one, and alternate attacks, they go for the force. Around that one saved AK-47, T-side economy good for at least one more buy. A couple of Galils in the mix as well. Yeah. This time just Crystal, and oh, he's caught such an awkward timing. Manages to dink up the second player as well. No frags yet, but that HE should do the job. And alternate attacks, upping the pace towards outside has got them an early man advantage. Now they need the conversion and they're queuing up in towards this trophy room, taking the fight and process crisp to clean Sixer out of the server. Five on three for LDLC. I mean, it's such an awkward spot. Do you even really commit to this? No, I, I would imagine not, especially with the health of Maka already being so low. Uh, unless they're somehow able to catch one of these stray players. Maybe if Kios catches process on his own right now, it gives them a bit of a chance. But even then... As soon as, uh, as soon as Alternate get down here, they should be ready for the trade. So I don't even think Kios is going to be allowed to get away. And no, he doesn't even get a kill. Panics just destroys him. Another upgrade is going to be coming in. This time in the other direction. It's Alternate who are getting off those weaker weapons. Thanks to a very successful show in here in this round. And well, yeah, Maka and Haji, they are backing away. You need these weapons. There's still loads of money. We did note that. There's... They're just balling at the moment because they were able to get those free upgrades <laughs> and they already were on a bonus round before that. So uh, th that's not an issue quite yet. So Alternate do need to ensure that they keep this up. But yeah, again, LDLC are the ones who are facing now an 8-12 to scoreline. So there's pressure in that regard, even if the economy is going to hold up for another round or two. Gives them a backbone into the next. Alternate attacks pretty much taking a leaf out of LDLC's playbook. Aggressive, fast-paced, crystal... Catching a nice little timing onto the AWPA just as he's looking to retreat. The dink. I mean, he wasn't even aiming at that second man. I don't think the spray down just happened to connect. And alternate attacks will take all the fortune they can get because it's been a rough start to their T side. First round on the board, but a huge opportunity here. The CT economy, we end up talking about it every broadcast at this point. It just does not hold up for long. They've got enough for maybe one yeah. more buy after this. But a huge opportunity for alternate attacks to start really thinning the numbers, starting to build up their own bank as well, piling that pressure onto the CT side. Having said that, if it goes wrong, it could go wrong pretty catastrophically. So you have to be at least mindful of the possibilities as, again, they've slowed things right down. No commitment initially whatsoever. Now the util will start to come over the top. The only worry is this time Maka in towards Secret doesn't have a P90. He's got an AWP and he wants to peek into it as well. Molotov to force him back, but not before he fires off a shot. Process counting his lucky stars that he's alive at this point. And there's still Lambert. Wrong side of the smoke. Crystal going through it. This should be a gift if he doesn't clear. It's going to be a freebie for the first. Can't quite find the second. Process at least there to bail his teammate out. And now the pressure really starts to mount. An awkward spray fight goes the way of Skrunk. And this CT side, they are scrambling. Mac is desperately trying to make noise in secret. Trying to get a player to turn his back and give Kios the opportunity. Bomb down. Three on three. And that AWPA is just causing havoc at the moment. Skrunk in heaven can't get anything done either. And it's Kios locking this A-bomb site down. Yeah, and while Six are catching the Lurker, now leaving it all onto Crimbo. He had eventually taken out Kios on the bomb site, but he had just been such a nuisance with those two kills and with delaying such a ridiculous amount of time as well. This is going to be a rough one for Crimbo. One positive is, at the moment anyway, they aren't in positions to actually stop the bomb plant. He should be given time to get it into position. And yeah, with a smoke down, especially for cover, he will be. Uh, and he has the chance to potentially catch Maka on his own right now. If he gets this first kill, then there is a uh, a good chance for him to position for the bomb plant, uh, to play the bomb. But no, he just gets absolutely wrecked. Was that a no-scope as well? I didn't catch that from Maka's perspective. Yeah. But according to the kill feed, it was. And according to Wolfie, it was. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, yeah, presume it was. <laughs> that is just nasty. <laughs> he had it lined up for the headshot and all. It's just He didn't get a chance to get the shot off before getting absolutely wrecked. 9 to 12, it is alternate at the moment who are in the uh, the kind of back and forth affair, which can end up rough. But again, with them being on the T side, if they can fire back immediately, then I don't think they'll be too worried, especially with that being a fairly close round with only a couple players surviving for LDLC. They've got enough there for another buy, to be fair. But again, as you said, that CT economy can very quickly dwindle away. See it so many times. CT dominance rewarded with all but a couple of rounds before the finances just dwindle. Again, alternate attacks. Plan A is these outside smokes. There's a gap, though, in towards Mini. Lambert oh. there to punish, but Crystal 
Just a little bit quicker on the draw, expecting that. Chaos trying to rotate in before the Smoker's Plume goes down as well. And this is Chaos. Panics finds yet another pick. Six of the next to fall. It's Haji desperately trying to recover something from this round. Hits his first shot. Ooh. Finds the second. That's bombed down on Panics. He's back and Crystal realizes it. Mac is there to support from heaven. LDLC, they're bringing this back, kicking and screaming. Haji looking for more and he'll find it. Crystal goes down. And it's a huge triple. He's made this round viable pretty much single-handedly. Crimbo once again required to try and find this 1v2. And he's going to be getting flashbacks to that Maka no scope. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't think Mac is going to no scope him at this range. If he does, I'll cry. But he is ready for it on the up. No pinned in. There's a molly that could flush him out. Hang on. This is a, a potential opportunity for Crimbo to drop it to the one-on-one. -on -one, and indeed, he's found it. It is now Haji left alone to finish off what has been a ridiculous round for himself so far. Crimbo, is he going to be able to make it happen? The bomb pretty much no longer a worry. It is the kill he wants and he finds it. It is Crimbo who steps up and, well, pretty much matches the showing that we've seen right there from Haji to ensure that his team are the ones who win the round. And now we're worried. We said LDLC were going to quickly run into a bit of a wall with that economy if they continue the back and forth, and they finally hit it. It's not going to impact the current by too much. Thankfully, I think only Lambert is lacking. He even has an M4 on the ground. But y you can see it's in a position now where they know if they lose this round, they'll alternate head up the map point. And yeah, with that, a pause has to be called in. I'm completely on board with this. It's actually alternate attacks who called the pause. Oh. It's a big call. Well, I mean, um... to be fair, they shouldn't have been in such a close position right there. So I can understand why they needed to ca uh, call the pause, try and compose themselves a little bit. Like, guys, we, we keep we keep getting brought back from, like, four on twos and such. We can't rely on clutches like that. Th that is certainly something that needs to be talked about. But, I mean, they made it work in the end. I, I think LDLC will be happy with those few moments to chat, though, for sure. Definitely feels like Hadji has switched on uh, the back end of that first half. Whoa, cheating now, accusations. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Nah, nah, rude. <laughs> I'm kidding. Nah, it, it definitely feels Someone like will take that seriously, though. Yeah, I know. I'm going to get clipped on Reddit now. What are you doing to me? But yeah, it, he's, he's definitely started to really wake up, hasn't he? You've seen him consistently finding those multi-kills. That's what he's there for on LDLC. That's what he's known for. He's starting to have some pretty serious impact in need of a big round here, though, because as we said, that CT economy, it's so fragile and it is really starting to struggle at this point. Both teams on the ropes financially. This could be a key swing round in deciding map one. Of course, the map pick of LDLC. And Maka going to catch a timing, slow peeking into that angle. Not the right idea at all for panics. And that alternate attacks again find themselves a man down. Huge trade from Skrunk, though. And Krimbo not quite able to find it. It looked like he had a timing on Kiel's. But it doesn't quite pan out. And this is where things can start to get really awkward. Crystal shut down, shot in the back. And Skrunk and Process in need of another big clutch. Alternate attacks really leaning on their individuals. And as Process goes down, I mean, 1v4, it's not going to happen with the AWP. Sixer cleans up house. And look at the economy for alternate attacks. Apologies. Auto Director absolutely hates me. It just never works too great. So I tried to take over, <laughs> but I'm also just not a good observer, especially on Nuke. <laughs> so uh, it, it fell apart right there. Can we get it to Taurus in the chat, please? Yeah, good, good work again from LDLC to fire back. It, it does seem like we, we've had them just come alive here on the CT side. Again, though, they had such a poor first half that Alternate are still in a pretty decent position. But yeah, they'll probably begin to worry pretty soon, especially when they're working with a dreadful force buy right here. They'll get 2,900 at least in the next round. So if they can confirm a bomb plant, then they will still be looking towards a buy. But that's going to be needed. Haji, first line of contact here as the A push comes in. They have actually dropped a player down the vent. I believe that's the bomb as well. Unfortunately, the rest of the players, they were delayed a small bit, and a couple of them were trying to keep the A defense preoccupied, which will give them the bomb plant. But now it's still a, an incredibly difficult, I was going to say, three on five after plant. It, it even just kind of collapses into a much more worse position. They lost their one rifle. Skrunk isn't even down on the right side of the map at the moment, as he was up on A, I believe, keeping them busy. But he is at least in a position that he could potentially flank out here. If he can even just steal a weapon and run away, I, I think that's kind of the best thing to hope for. A Galil, ah, that's not good enough. Try and get an AK or an op. Yeah, he's going in. Here's a molly. He will get it down on the bomb. They have a smoke, though, so yeah, nothing to be done. <laughs> if they didn't have a smoke, they would have been screwed, and I guess that's part of the uh, the plan of the players initially while they were dropping the event down the bomb was to try and waste a couple nades of those A players and try and take one or two of them out so that they wouldn't have it for the retake. But yeah, obviously, there was smokes remaining. A Galil, I mean, it's an okay recovery, especially when you look at the fact that Process and Panics won't be able to afford nades if they were to buy their own AKs, so they may as well just take the Galil. Gives them something to work with at the very least, but that gap 
Started at seven rounds, down to just two. The pressure really starting to pile up. And again, LDLC have made a great financial recovery. They've built themselves up that little bit of bank again where they got at least a slight cushion to fall onto should things go wrong. Nice spray through Ooh. the smoke from Lambert. Getting some good damage onto Crystal. He goes down to 41. Alternate attacks. They're wanting to pincer her in through Mini, but the smokes are keeping them out of it. And Haji, that is the worst player to run into. Two quick frags. Kiels is there to back him up from CT Vent. And I don't even know what the plan was there from alternate attack. Alex is going to try and get something done outside, but Lambert will just tap him on down. I mean, are we just leaving Crimbo in clutches at this point? What's going on? He's 1v5, no uh, no util, <laughs> just an AK and armor to work with. And he's being hunted as well. You can understand it from LDLC wanting to take that last rifle away. If they can, it should be and will be a guaranteed oh. 13th. You can't knife him. The back's against the wall, so the execution will come in. Three in the round again for Haji. And this is getting, I'd say, pretty damn worrying for alternate attacks. If he was a real pro there, he would have got his teammate to pop a flash, so he'd have to turn into the wall, so he'd expose his back. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you wouldn't You wouldn't have time for that, I'm just being stupid. Yeah, no, he didn't want to get overzealous right there and give a chance for Krimbo to step back up. We've already seen one clutch from him, to be fair. So yeah, just wanting to ensure the round win, it's way too close of a game. 12 to 13 still, but LDLC, they have really started dominating the second half. I am, at this point, incredibly worried for alternate. Again, it is LDLC's map, so on, on paper, we were expecting them to be able to win it, but alternate, they had such an amazing first half, but yeah, this T-side is not finding the same level of success. And at the moment, they've got one hero AK, but other than that, just half investment. It's the pistols and Kevlar. They've got Deegs, at least, so I mean, still very dangerous weapons if you're hitting your shots, but it does seem like they've all kind of slowed down coming into the second half as well. Definitely looks like some teething pains on this new roster. Just not looking quite as interconnected as you hope. Some issues here and there. Nice nade comes in from Lambert. That's four players tagged within a one-shot headshot of these M4s. And with just Eagles, that hero AK for Crystal. It's a question of how much work it can do at this point. The AWP trying to aggress for Maka. They're yet to get into this bomb site, but now the bomb will flood out through control. Early fight going well. They actually take a team kill. Panics taking out Skrunk in the chaos, and that's going to cause some real issues as Sixer takes out that hero rifle we were talking about. And Krimbo, well, he's had a couple of clutches. This one's a 1v3. At least the first player he'll encounter is low HP, but such an awkward angle to deal with. He'll start to push his way down this ramp. Needs a clean early fight and he's not going to get it. Sixer will deal with the last man and we level out at 13 apiece with alternate attacks. I mean, we said LDLC were running out of chances in the first half. This is even worse for the German side. Oh yeah, no, it's always worse when you're in the second half when it's the finish line that they're so, so close to. At least in the first half, you, you kind of have the hope like we can still come back alive. We can we can get another round or two and then we can start off the second half on a high note. But no, it's do or die pretty much at this point for alternate attacks. They've put everything into this round as well. And yeah, that lurk for Krimbo is just not going well. Obviously, if his teammates find success, he's in a fantastic position. But they are not having much success uh, at the moment. So he's just being left alone in pre pretty much every single round. And unfortunately, he's not really getting those clutches at the moment. We've seen the one, but it, it, pretty much every single time it's been insurmountable odds. So you can't really be expecting them even from him. Oh, Maka might be caught actually creeping up. See, great head. Just the top of the head shows. And with that, Panics absolutely destroys him. There is one more player up close on outside who's still ready to watch this push. But at the moment, he's actually just tucked in. So I was going to say Mayan could be left open. But alternate, they want to move in for the control towards hell and such. So they do push forward and, well, trade out Lambert one for one. Keeps them in a pretty decent position. But there is good damage done. Crystal and Panics aren't looking too healthy. So it's it's not over by any means for LDLC. And having lost the outside control, you can see they've gone ahead and pushed through lobby now to ensure that they, they at least have some idea of what's going on. So they've made the correct decisions there. A pretty clear picture, at least, of where the control is for now. And the low HP player oh. walking right into it. Nice double spray down from Kios. Keeps his team in the game, but it's going to be Haji in the 1v2. Process able to take out the backstab. And he was the player holding that ramp. So a long rotation in towards heaven. Starting to creep his way up now. Actually going through outside to see if maybe he can get the angle as potentially, yeah, up through aircon. 
Trying to catch Prosa's just a little off guard. We've seen this fight before. It's awkward. It doesn't normally work, but Haji's going to make it work. First headshot comes in. Position now known. Pop flashes himself into this bomb site. It's all on the timing for Skrunk. He's just got to stay hidden. Let that bomb tick down. Put the pressure on Haji, and he'll walk into the crosshairs. It's a 14th for alternate attacks. Again, it goes down to the wire. And the CT side, they've built themselves up so much bank. The pain is going to be coming all over again. Yeah, no, it's every single round they win is just so, so close. They can never form any sort of economy. They can never get that backbone, as you said, on the side of alternate. And uh, without a pause, who's this one from? I, I don't currently have access to it. This could be either. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. Again, with how close that round was for alternate with the fact that they know LDLC have another buy coming through for sure. It's, uh, yeah, it's going to be rough. They need to keep that up. They can't afford to go back and forth like they have been so far. You're seeing Crystal already put on a MAC-10. Crimbo, will he be dropped? Panics could just go for the body armor behind the op, probably, and then give over another rifle, because I do think they needed to work with, but no. So maybe he could give a little, but they're not going to bother with it. Crimbo is just going to be left on a weaker weapon as well. So probably two AKs. This is, it's not too good for alternate to try and actually chain these rounds together. That is a huge call, to say the least. Putting a lot of faith in Panics on that AWP here. Crystal doing what he does best. Fast in towards Ooh. those vents. Takes so much damage for his trouble, but he's just trying to draw the rotations. He's trying to get Maka down onto this B-bomb site and achieves it as well. The Orpa, that nade, that Molly's going to force Crystal out and he'll hit the pick. It's the early man advantage is found. The MAC-10, I don't think it got done quite as much as... Alternate attacks were hoping for there. He got down into the B-bomb site, sure, but with so little HP left, it was all too easy for Maka to flush him out. And now the set execute. Rotation's not really drawn through either. Mollies will head out onto the A-bomb site. They drop down a couple more players. Late vent dive coming in. Skrunk, the lurker, will take a lick of damage as well. It's Haji to deal with the early fight, and he finds one. Traded out cleanly, and potentially this B-bomb site starts to open up. Should at least be an afterplant for alternate attacks. Yeah, bomb will go down. It's planted for the single door, though, for decon, so it's it's not a fantastic position to be able to play for the time on the bomb. You can see they still want to try and move in and take ramp control, but Panix is going to find early contact. He actually looked like he had the collateral lined up, but apparently not. It doesn't matter either way because he's ready for the follow-up, but he seems to know there's a potential third player to come in through secret, and, well, that's the last man left standing now because you see six are dropping on ramp. A big kill from Skrunk that confirms the round for alternate and confirms a map point right now. LDLC backs against the wall here on their own map choice. It is not a great position to be in. It's not a good look, is it? Two opportunities oh. for alternate attacks to shut it down again. Panics. One of those situations where he should be getting one and done, right? If that no scope land, if the no scope, the collateral it like lands, he hit the. He, it looked like he hit Lambert in the ass when he hit the uh, when he got the first shot off as well, but apparently no hitbox there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he should be rushed down in that point, right? First frag, yeah. okay, fine, but he's got to reload. He's got to pull the bolt on that AWP, get in his face, make it difficult. Instead, they wait just a split second too long. It's a gift of a frag, and it pretty much seals that final nail in the coffin of the round. And puts all that pressure back on LDLC. Alternate attacks, interestingly, they've had mixed success towards outside, but they keep committing to it regardless. Good damage onto the AWP of Maka, of course, with the big green, not gonna be so fussed. Just need to be slightly conscious of the utility could come flying over the top of those smokes. So we'll just back out in towards heaven and that early control, a couple of players for alternate attacks start to double back. They know there's been aggression in towards the lobby, and they are starting to crunch their way through it as well. LDLC, Kios getting very proactive off the back of this map control being lost. They've taken it entirely here. It's going to have to be the B-bomb site at this point for alternate attacks, but Crystal deals with the aggression, finds the early man, and now, with all that damage onto Maka, alternate attacks are in a fantastic position. Yeah, it does look like they want to move the bomb down secret, I believe. Paul G's doing the observant at this point as well. Not a fun time. They do have a nice double setup though towards Secret. I was going to say Mac is already low health, so he could fall quickly. But no, gets the shot off, kind of acts as the distraction and 
will allow for Lambert to catch one kill, which now propels alternate attacks back in the other direction over towards A, where, unfortunately, they don't have more than just Haji, I believe, ready to hold on. He does get one kill, at least. Maka actually going to find one on the flank, too. So this has taken quite a while for alternate to cover ground. By the time they get towards A, you have six are already prepped up in heaven. So he could do a big job here by stopping the bomb plant and there we go he catches it but he will be traded out on and unfortunately that now leaves Maka as the soul man standing low health to make this happen to keep them alive crystal he only needs one bullet he knows the pushes come in and there it is 16 to 13 for alternate attacks things got incredibly dicey on the second half but they are able to put the uh the nail in the coffin in the end and with that steal away ldlc is map choice a huge first map for them and the opportunity to make it another 2-0 and on Vertigo. Coming up next, do bear with us. We're going to throw it to a nice quick break. And when we're back, map two.